Hi everyone, this is Colleen Meyer and welcome to Dream Tracks Live and Uncut. We have an amazing guest with us today. It is Paul Weber. Paul Weber is one of Hollywood's most respected casting directors. He is a longtime executive head of television and casting and feature film consultant for MGM Studios. Paul effectively moved between both mediums with ease, of course. Paul is now fully independent casting director and producer and has worked on programs on Lifetime, Stars, A&E, just to name a few. So welcome, Paul. And I'm going to introduce our host for the evening, Frank Perello. Frank is co-owner and lead instructor of Dream Tracks Academy, and he is a, an award-winning writer and producer. Welcome, everyone. And I'm the moderator, and I'll be taking care of all questions. Do you have any questions? Please put them in the comments section, and we'll answer them live. Frank? All right. Hey, Paul. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Frank, Colleen. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, we're glad to have you on. So I, I just want to start out, you know, uh, giving you an opportunity to, uh, you know, give the audience a little bit of knowledge about yourself. Tell us a little bit about how you got into casting. Uh, you know, did you start as an actor? I mean, how did you get to where you are right now? Well, it was actually a fairly uh, well-trod path that a lot of us have taken who've gotten into casting. Many of us did come from a from an acting background. And I think a lot of us who started in acting had no idea what casting directors did because I came from mostly a stage background and a rather um, traditional academic university background and then a professional acting uh, academy school and then went on into uh, to do equity theater. Uh, and I had no clue at all how film and television casting or auditioning or that process uh, was so alien to me as a stage trained actor that I had to move to LA to uh, understand that process. And in, in that journey, I was able to sort of get my sea legs under me after I went to school, came down to Los Angeles. Um, one of the best pieces of, of advice I got was from a casting director who I ended up working for as an assistant, who said, why don't you come on in and, and intern in our office? So you get a sense as an actor what we do, and I think that can help your audition skills. And if it's something you're really interested in, you know, we, we can't pay you, but we'd love to have you help us out um, back in the day when internships were unpaid. Um, and so that's uh, what I did. And at the same time, I took uh, classes. Uh, I started to study with a man named Michael Shirtliff, who was one of the most uh, revered uh, casting directors of his day, who was also an audition coach and teacher. So I became one of his disciples and learned a lot about um, uh, the audition technique that he taught for actors from a casting director point of view. And that really informed me as a casting person once I threw my hat in the ring and became uh, more involved in the casting process and left my acting hat and directing hat to the side, I thought, you know what, I can bear, uh, marry my skills as a casting director or as, a, as an actor and a director into casting and with Michael's help and some dumb luck and some opportunities, I was able to move into casting and really hadn't looked back since. And that took me to uh, MGM where I spent 16 years as, a, as head of casting for television and their feature consultant and now a role more as um, as an independent casting director, producer, um, private audition coach, and um, have traveled, been so fortunate to travel around the world teaching audition technique before the world stopped. And here we are just beginning to uh, see a few green shoots, couple steps forward, one step back. But I find myself being asked now, as I have with you folks, to come and actually work in person again with actors, which is such a joy to be able to work in 3D once again. Now, now Paul, uh, one of the things that you were talking about um, is, you know, I don't know if you know, but I got a chance to be an associate casting director on some stuff. I helped out some of the local casting directors. And it, it is amazing to be on both sides of that table. Uh, one of the things, you know, um, that you hear a lot from actors is they think um, they don't really understand casting directors and what they do. A lot of them think, you know, 
uh, you know, they're just out there and they've got to uh, fill this role and they're not going to take anybody who's new and, you know, and there's all these risks involved. But really, I found that that really what goes on is that you guys need to cast that part. And when somebody comes in and, and they can they can book that role, it's really it really helps your job go a lot faster. You guys are really not a bad guy uh, in the sense that you're not really trying to hurt the actors. You really you really need to fill those roles. And when you find somebody who actually comes in and nails it, you're like, OK, I can move on to the next thing. Right. Yes, we are saints. Um, okay, I'm not gonna maybe back. not quite saints, but yeah, 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 I don't think we're going to buy that. But we are certainly um, on the other spectrum side of the spectrum. In a way, we're mercenaries. It's really important that we do this, that we get our job. It's almost it's a bit of that as well too. We need you guys to really perform well as actors to make us good. So in a way, that's our job. If for no other reason than we need to get these girls cast. When I was at the studio, most of the projects we did were shot in different locations, different locations that didn't often have the caliber of actors that we were used to in Los Angeles and New York. And we shot for very simple reasons in other locations, financial reasons. And my, my most common first conversations with our head of productions were, well, we're going to shoot in Baltimore. We're going to shoot in Shreveport. We're going to shoot in Vancouver. We're going to shoot any number of other places aside from or instead of Los Angeles. Right. What's the talent like? And that was a learning curve every single time for me. And I always had to answer, well, I hope it's pretty good for our sake. And our production head would say, I hope so, too, because we need to save money by hiring local actors. Right. So why don't you sniff it out, see who you can hire locally to help you, and let's try to get the best actors we can find because I don't wanna have to fly actors in. That was a common conversation. And every time it was a new journey for us in terms of finding talent, that has changed over time. Vancouver has exploded with great talent 20, 25 years ago, it wasn't. The more production that happens in places like Vancouver, Toronto, Atlanta, Chicago, anywhere else, the level of talent would be will begin to rise to meet our requirements. But it sure seems to take a while in some markets because this is not what most actors do for a living in smaller markets. So they don't do this for a living, so they're not quite sure how to do it. And now partially because of the virtual world we're living in, they're learning. And because of a lot of the productions that are starting to happen because of uh, streaming services, so many more platforms, uh, independent productions, um, as you know, as a filmmaker, how easy it is now to make your own content for a fraction of the cost that it used to be made for, which makes the availability of content uh, and the, the ability to tell stories in a way that we couldn't before, simply because of financial concerns. You're able to do that now. Now you need to people it with good talent. And that's what, what I sort of started to go out on a roadshow, basically, going around to different markets, checking out what the talent was, and then eventually turning to teaching actors, sort of in the old studio system way, of going to them and actually teaching local actors what the expectations of LA-based casting directors are. Okay, well, before we get um, onto some questions, and there are some questions, and I know you're heading out to Hollywood Bowl here pretty soon. Um, tell us uh, about what what is it you focus on when you do your workshops? What, what is it you offer the person who doesn't live in Los, in Los Angeles, but they, they live in Vegas and they wanna work in uh, Los Angeles productions and things like that. But it seems, even though we're not far and we're in, not, in the virtual world, we're even closer, uh, but a lot of people still, there's like a, there's a dis demystifying of what Hollywood's really about that um, a lot of people need to, to understand. And, and I think you do that in your workshop, right? So you give us a little bit about that. Well, you just said it there, and I know it's a bit of an overused term, uh, demystification, but it's exactly what I try to do. I deconstruct the process and I, and I ask the, cat, the actors to step in my shoes in terms of what, what they would expect if they were casting directors from an actor. Um, 
We address the psychology of casting and how it affects actors uh, as far as uh, 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 hurdles that actors, psychological hurdles, rejection, anxiety, fear. I tell some war stories about well-known actors who have gone through this and survived it and grown through the process. And hopefully we'll be able to pass on some of those lessons to actors so that they feel less victimized by the process and more, another overused term, empowered as, as to taking their, their craft back and trusting what they do and learning how to maneuver the sort of minefields of what can go wrong in an audition and then how to, in the second half of the class, we actually work on scenes and I redirect scenes and we look for new ways of approaching the scenes that they may not have thought of before. I don't dumb anything down for new actors. I treat them all as if they're professionals and I, um, and, and I find that's the best way to, to approach any actor of any uh, level of, of training or experience. And, and, and I ask actors to just be available, open. It's a playground for us. Um, uh, certainly we all have expectations, but what I want to try to do is tamper down the fear and the, the, the uh, feelings of, am I gonna be good enough? And uh, how do I please the casting director? We get rid of all that. We strip it down to just talking about how the industry works, what our expectations are, and ultimately how to approach the work in, a, in an original or fresh way that, um, that creates an impression that is lasting for a casting director, whether you get that role at that time or not. Right, you're definitely the casting director for me. Your, your credentials are incredible and you've mm -hmm. done so much, especially with the Stargate uh, franchise. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we hear that a lot as actors, you know, it's this or it's that, it needs to be, but, but I think what you do you know, what your workshop really helps is making it practical, a very practical thing. See, you know, one of the things that um, that I tell my students a lot when we're when we're in this is, you know, um, you go into these auditions, you know, and everybody's sitting in the in the, uh, in the in the waiting room waiting to be seen. And and you're going to see people in there sometimes you've seen them on television shows. You're going to you're going to run into it. You're that type. You're going to they're going to be the same type. But. The score is zero to zero. Nobody's made up their mind about anything. If they, they had already got the role, they wouldn't be sitting in the waiting room, correct? Yes, and trying to second guess what we're looking for when we don't know what we're looking for is kind of a fool's errand there. So when you come in, and again, this will start happening again, but now they're virtual waiting rooms. Um, and I'm spending a little extra time these days on virtual auditioning on self tapes, on um, Zoom meetings, and how, how what you can do now is something you could never do before and how to play that to your advantage right. rather than again, feel victimized. I always leave actors feeling that this is the best time ever to be an actor. These are the reasons why. And all of a sudden, the little victim turns into this sort of butterfly and says, oh my gosh, you're right. Here I've been beating myself up and look at all these opportunities. Look at all the tools we have that we can now utilize that we never could before. Exactly. So that's what I try to leave actors with at the end of the lifting experience that makes, you know, uh, I I've been called a cross between uh, uh, Tony Robbins and Simon Cowell, you know, so it's, you know, and I, and I actually said, thank you. As if <laughs> is that a compliment or not, but he said, no, you can be really like tough love on us, but ultimately the takeaway is really positive and hopefully inspiring and encouraging. Well, you're going to be here in, at our school, actually, here in Las Vegas on August 28th and 29th. And say somebody who doesn't really know a lot about you or, or what you do or how you do this. Why should somebody want to attend the, um, the Paul Weber workshop on this? Well, uh, I don't want this to sound like an infomercial, but, but it, and I have to say, and I've been doing this for a long time, I'm pretty good at at, at, at getting this across to actors, of, of filling up the day with a lot more than they would have ever expected 
and have probably never quite experienced before. So I think the takeaway from just the day is going to be sort of revelatory. And I learn a lot too, because I meet so many new talent and new actors. And I look at a scene that maybe I've done a hundred times with another actor and all of a sudden something fresh comes out or a new question comes to me from an actor that, that makes me think in a different way because I'm always learning as well too. So really for actors who are looking to sort of raise the bar for the next level, even the actors who think they know it all are definitely gonna learn something new that they never did before. And, and that's what I do when I take workshops or I go to retreats. It's, it's a little scary because I'm pushed a little bit beyond my comfort zone. And that's always scary. It's like doing stand up or improv or anything like that. Terrifying. But, but we do it. And that's what I always try to look at myself in the mirror and say, are you, are you walking the walk as much as you're talking the talk? Yeah. So there are times when I have had to walk a walk and it's been really scary well, for certain things that I've done that, that challenged me in a way that I hadn't been challenged. Yeah, I just want to um, say one thing, uh, and then we'll go on to get some of these questions. Um, I had dinner with you maybe I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago or so. And what really struck me with you um, at dinner, and I know I'm going to blow your head up a little bit here, but it was really just the passion you have for what you do and, and the heart you have for the actor. You understand what it feels like to be in that place, you know, hoping that you get your first chance. But um, understanding that, uh, that for a lot of actors, they, they think it's their talent. And sometimes, I mean, a lot of times it's not their talent. It's just for some reason they don't fit that role. And, and there's nothing anybody can do about that. You just have to kind of move on and do the next thing. And, and eventually, you know, that opportunity and that preparation will come together and it'll lock in. They're going to get their chance. A lot of people don't think they're ever going to get a chance, but that's not true. If they stick this out, they get a chance, don't they? Yeah, that's that's. Really a great point. And, and I made so many mistakes when I was an actor because I just didn't understand the process and I made everything personal. And, you know, we also talk about uh, something I call the art of attraction. What attracts us to each other? Not only from a casting point of view to an actor, but also human beings. What attracts us to each other as people and how to harness that in the room as well? Because ultimately you want to create a human connection. It's not always the easiest thing to do over Zoom, but it's getting to be easier because people are getting more actors and everyone is are getting more used to how to play the small screen this way. Right. So yes, it's been, uh, you know, I, I've learned much through the years and that's hopefully what I will pass on from my struggles as an actor and others who've gone on to great success. And you're right. It, it's not just about talent. Yes, that helps, but I've seen remarkable talent crash and burn in this industry. And I've seen medium level talent, let's just say, who I never quite thought was going to make it because I just don't, I didn't know if they had enough of it. And they worked their butts off and kept working and showing up and getting auditions and getting better. And all of a sudden I start seeing those actors on series and in films. That's so true. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Colleen. She'll uh, give us some of the questions people have for you. Okay, here's a question. Tip. So I guess they're asking for a tip on getting a Las Vegas, the Las Vegas actor stepping into a California production. Gotcha. Well, you guys are almost a, a satellite from uh, LA, and a lot of you go back and forth, which is pretty easy to do. You're one of those smaller markets with access to LA. And also you have access to a lot of entertainment in Los Angeles, not necessarily film and television, but certainly more so than we've seen in the past because of some of the things we've talked about. Um, the best opportunities, I don't, I don't really overly encourage actors in different regions of the country to rush to Los Angeles right now when there are so many opportunities online, first of all, and even locally to do films um, and independent films and all sorts of streaming projects that are happening in your neck of the woods. Never as much as you'd like, but certainly growing. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not there to recruit actors. I'm there to try to make the actors who are in the regions that they are living in for now 
the very best competitors they can be in that market. I, I think for a lot, of, a lot of actors, they think LA is like, that's where the union projects are. Cause there's not, you know, the union's not strong in every area. That, thank you for bringing that up. Most states are right to work states which means non-union projects mostly. And the union actors have to scramble for the relatively few number of union jobs. Right. And you don't want to turn union too quickly in a smaller market unless you're going to move to Los Angeles and then you're really in the shark tank, right? right? So exactly. if, if you can develop your demo reels and your local content as a non-union actor, build your marketing tools so that maybe an agent will take a chance on you because they see content that they think they can sell you with. And these are a lot of things we talk about in the class as well. Um, then you have a fighting chance, but if you got a commercial and you go, I'm going to turn union now, I don't want to get in trouble with the unions here because I belong to too many of them myself. But if you get that chance and all of a sudden you find yourself a union actor with no opportunities to work. Right. So rein exactly. back those, you know, those horses a little bit while you, you know, build um, a, a resume and build some content, build a demo reel, learn the craft in movies like you do produce and direct so that, so that eventually they understand their way around a set right. and they're all of a sudden looked at by an LA agent as someone who's marketable for them and they will take a chance. And eventually like all of us, we become union actors like I did through time. Right. Now, cause there's another question, Colleen. Go ahead. Um, what do you think about the talent level here in Las Vegas as a whole? Let me let me, let me just uh, preface that, if you would. Uh, uh, for what you've seen, and I know that you were part of a showcase we put on last year. Uh, so, w w so let me preface it with that. So the... Um, what are you seeing, uh, you know, with people here in the market? Are you seeing that people in Vegas are becoming better? Or are you seeing more talent uh, come out of Vegas? Well, the more that the actors commit mm -hmm. creatively to their choice of wanting to be an actor, whether they are, they should always consider themselves actors, whether they have other professions that feed that passion. But it really starts with having the mindset of, of this is what I want to do and this is what I'm willing to do to, to get to where I need to get in terms of my craft and my relationships and my experiences. And we all suffer from a certain level of laziness sometimes. And boy, and I talk about this too, about, um, about having a dream, but having a strategy on how to achieve the dream. It's too easy just to have the dream. And actors um, are dreamers. Right. A lot of creatives are dreamers, but they don't have a path to success aside from just the dream. So we talk about how to strategize that, uh, especially in an industry that is so undisciplined in terms of structure, but requires the talent to be more disciplined than any doctor, lawyer, engineer, accountant. That's so true. They can take, they, those folks can take a, a little day off here and there. Right. And, and they have a nine to five maybe, but actors don't. So yeah. it, it's constantly, they're constantly being forced into this place of, oh, I, I'm my own businessman. I run my own company. I'm also a creative person. How do I maximize my product? I always tell the students all that you are your product. You are what you are. Yes. Saying. And yet there's that left right brain where they're the dreamer, but they're, they're also the businessman. That's the most challenging part. It's not easy to be able to find the balance between how to create a career at the same time, how to remain as vulnerable and open an artist as you can be and learn that that's what you need to do. But gosh, what other industry can you do that? in? Um, you know, I have some older actors that come into actors who may be coming back into the industry from in uh, regional areas and they come into the class and they've come from a very corporate background. So they're not used to pushing beyond boundaries because they were told that they need to be in this structured box as corporate drones, right? right? And corporate workers. Now they made their living that way, but what a great opportunity. And that's what we need to do. I have to sort of shake the cobwebs 
and rattle the cage a little bit to give them permission to say, you can actually act out, like literally act out. You could get fired by doing this at your job. You're not in your job. You're playing a character. So let's do this. Right. And then when they break through and it takes usually classes, you know, with, with acting teachers who can get you there. But I try to push that idea on them, even that very first day and that the only day that I'm with them. Now, I'm going to interrupt, uh, Colleen. I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to take this question here because I, I don't think as a cat, uh, Raph, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. I don't think as a casting director that they understand whether you studied Meisner or you studied Stanislavski or your Adler or what do you think? They're just looking at the end result. But the question is, Paul, was do you believe in the acting in the moment, stand up Slossy scholar, are you more toward Meisner? But that would be more like what you were as an actor or from a performer's perspective, right? It's, you're absolutely right again. You're really good at this, Frank. Um, <laughs> it's whatever works. Because you're right. I mean, as a former actor, I studied so many of those disciplines and I took what I needed from them. Some, some Meisner didn't work for me as well as it did for others. So I looked to other forms of that, that, that fit more toward my, maybe my, my instincts, my personality, my tuition, intuition. Um, and I found my way, but I certainly took from every discipline that I learned from and I found them all very useful and fascinating. But, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We don't, I hate, this is, sounds so brutal. Here's the Simon Cowell coming out. <laughs> uh, I don't care what your process is, as long as we see the result. And that's the, the problem. And that's, in a way, our, my greatest regret and dilemma is we are result-oriented as casting directors. You only have a few minutes to show us what you can do. That's what gives me so much pleasure. You talk about the passion of, of what I do. The passion is partially going out and working with actors, coaching actors, uh, teaching actors, to give them the insights that they will need so that they can come in and give us results. Right. But the process is what's important and that's what you have to learn forced. Now you may be great instinctual actors and you may be able to wing it. And there are actors I know um, that well-known actors who haven't had an acting class in their day. They are empathetic, intuitive actors. They just have it. A lot of the great actors never step foot in an, in an acting school. Right. And yet they learned on set because they were just, they just had it. And not everyone right. Has it? You have to develop it, and that takes training and, and experience. And and for most of us poor mortals, that's what it's going to take. So you develop your tools, build that tool chest, and then you start showing us what you can do where we don't see the wheels turning. Sometimes right. I work with actors who are auditioning who I know are in process in certain classes, and I see their process churning in the audition because they're midstream here. Once you know they dovetail, you know, uh, you, you learn, you practice, you do an, an audition, you're in the middle of class, you're in the middle of a Meisner program. I see the Meisner technique, and after a while, it starts to integrate. And the more you audition and the more training you get under your belt, the more it becomes integrated. Uh, okay. But that takes some time. But the fact is, they are doing it, and you're doing it, and you're training, and it's whatever works. Well, we're going to just take this one last question. I know you you got to go. you got somewhere you need to be. So I'm, be. Um, so I'm going to have Colleen go ahead and ask this last question for you. Um, sure. As a casting director, what do you see? It, what do you like to see in an actor? And what do you not like to see in an actor? Or do you don't want to see? Well, okay. Uh, what I like to see in actors is a sense of, of confidence absolute confidence with based on the work that they've done before they audition. And that's usually born of preparation. Confidence versus ego. Confidence versus entitlement. Mm. And that's what sometimes we see is an actor's ego rather than a willing participant in the creative process. And, and when I see an actor come in and own the room from that point of 
of preparation and, and humility. That's what I like to see. What I don't like to see is exact opposite of that. How's that for a quick answer? There's more, but but maybe we'll save some. Uh, that's a great answer. Um, uh, Eric, um, we're gonna save that question. Maybe that's a good question to ask for Paul when he comes out. Uh, Paul's got somewhere he needs to be, so I wanna let him go. Going to the Hollywood Bowl, and I'm, a couple of friends just got engaged, so taking them out for Tchaikovsky fireworks at the Hollywood Bowl. So yeah, I'll, I'll uh, I got to get the margaritas going. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we have a few minutes of your time. I think we've taken up over half an hour now, but we appreciate your gracious. We are so excited about having you come out here. Uh, you're one of the prime casting directors in Hollywood. You worked your way up through it. It was no easy task. There's nothing in this business. Doesn't matter what role you decide to take in it. If it's producer, casting director, director, none of it's easy for anybody. But uh, you worked your way up through hard work and you're outstanding at what you do. We're really excited to see what you do when you come on today. Well, thanks so much. And, and again, it doesn't feel that hard because I've always loved what I do. And I think when actors or any creatives or anybody who loves their work and loves their job, it doesn't necessarily feel um, like it's it's hard work, but it, it's a, it's it's a joy and it's something we love to do. And and that's what I, I hope is um what, what we can all experience if we're lucky enough in our working careers. Great. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye-bye.